Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm KG and I'm a customizer and I like to make all kinds of nerdy things. In this video, we're going to be showing you how I made my diorama inspired by The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> So for this diorama, I want to create a cave and maybe a path leading up to the cave with some trees either side. Here, I'm just going to mark off where I want the cave entrance to go and where I want the trees to be, just to get an idea of the landscape that I'm trying to create. On this piece of paper, I just wanted to get the scale of how tall I want the cave entrance to be. And then I'm going to transfer this onto the foam and cut that out. And now I'm just going to cut out some supports just to help with the stability of the cave. To glue everything together, I'm just using some hot glue. Just to help with alignment, I'm going to glue some scrap pieces of foam either side to create sort of a overhang, if that makes sense. And then with more flat pack and foam, I'm going to box up the inside of the cave. The cave floor is just some more XPS foam cut to size to make a snug fit. Now I'm gluing some scrap pieces of foam inside the cave just to make sure it doesn't look too flat. Using some bamboo skewers, I'm going to make some stalactites. Once they're glued in, I'm going to use the hot glue gun just to build up on the stalactites themselves. And you can probably tell I've gone ahead and glued a bunch of scrap pieces of foam to the outside of the cave. Now for the messy part, my homemade texture paste, which is tile grout, mod podge, PVA and paint. And off camera, I created this place of power, which is probably going to be an igni place of power. If anyone knows why, please leave that in the comments. And now everything gets a nice covering of the texture paste. And I'm just getting these popsicle sticks prepared as I'm going to be turning them into a notice board that you'll find in game. This is how Geralt gets his contracts. Once they were finished, I hit them with a bit of sandpaper just to get them prepared for paint. I also created this signpost as well, which I was really happy with. To make quick work on the painting, I took them to the spray booth and this gave me the opportunity to use my new air compressor that I got off my wife for Christmas. And honestly, I couldn't be happier. This is just an amazing gift. For this project and for others as well, I've picked up some decal paper that I can use in my inkjet. The instructions said to use a gloss clear coat over them just before you do use them, uh, but I opted to use a matte clear coat, I don't think it really matters, uh, but it does matter how many coats you put on. I only put one coat on and the ink started to run a little bit. It wasn't too bad, uh, but I think I'd give it a few more coats, which I did do later on and it has worked a lot better. I still need a lot of practice with decals for sure, uh, but I'll leave the link in the description of the video that I watched to try and help me get to grips with it. It 
It was very nerve wracking as I've not done this for a while, but I don't think it's turned out too bad. Now I was ready to lay out where I wanted the trees. These trees are just branches that I picked up on a little foraging trip that I did. Once I got them home, I made sure to bake them just to kill off any bacteria that may be on them. I also found some leaves and some rocks as well, which I also baked. So this is a method that I've seen Luke Tower use in one of his videos. Using flags, you can number your trees by placing them into the foam next to where the flag was. And then you take that numbered flag and put it into the position where that tree was. And it's as simple as that. I might not have explained it very well, but I'll leave a link to Luke Town's video. He explains it way better than I do. And now the ground is ready for some texture paste. I was having a bit of a hard time figuring out how I wanted to paint the rocks. Then I came across a tutorial on acrylic wet wash technique. This was by the Terrain Tutor. This was a great tutorial. I really learned a lot from it. But to do this, I needed to seal the foam up. That's why I'm using some black paint and Mod Podge. Now the only Mod Podge I had left was the black paint and Mod Podge. I could have used some white in it, but I did want to keep it black. So I opted to take it into the spray booth just to paint them grey. I also hit the ground with a Mud Brown from Vallejo Air. Now for the acrylic wash technique. For this I'm just using some brown, orange and yellow. This acrylic wet wash technique is supposed to be used on plaster. So I think that's why mine doesn't turn out exactly how I envisioned it. But I think it does pay off in the end. I'll leave a link to the Terrain Toothers video in the description so you can check it out for yourselves. For mine, I opted to do a black oil wash at the ends just to bring everything together. Then the cave got the same wet wash technique, although I added a bit more green in this one. Once everything was dry, I come back in with some grey just to do a dry brushing over the surface just to bring out some more of the detail.
I was then ready to glue the trees back into place. For this, I was using some PVA glue. It left a little bit of a gap, so what I did was I come in with some craft sand just to sprinkle over the PVA. This was a bit unnecessary as this area is going to get covered in leaves later on anyway. But hindsight is 2020. I found this company do little kits that are aimed at different terrains. This is their Elf and Orc basing kit, which came with a lot of slate, stones, vines, flock, even some static grass as well. So if you're just starting out like me and you don't really know where to start, some of their kits will be aimed at you and I think you'll really like them. So check them out, that's warwillgaming.com. This is not a sponsor or anything. I just really, really like this company. To glue everything down, I just used some matte Mod Podge, which I picked up with the War Gaming kit. And then I sprayed them with a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water to spread the glue around and get everything nice and soaked. I even used some of the flock on the cave and also on the place of power as well. It just brings a little bit more life to the pieces, I think. And for the top of the cave, I used some of the vines that came with the kit. For the place of power, I wanted to try and do a glow effect from the center of the ring. I'm not sure how well I've pulled it off, but I think it does look cool. Now in game, the Igni sign actually floats in the middle of the circle. So what I've done is I've painted the Igni sign onto a clear piece of plastic. I've then used strips of UV resin to try and glue it into place. I then just kept layering up until I got something that I was satisfied with. And honestly, I think this turned out really well. Then using some more UV resin and brown paint, I created a sort of muddy puddle. I definitely need to invest in a new UV light. This one I have to press every like 30 seconds or so. It's really annoying that I can't just walk away and do something else. So yeah, that's definitely on my list. Now I was ready to add the leaves. For this, I was just gonna put some PVA glue down and then sprinkle the leaves over the top of that. 
as you can probably tell I did get a bit more leaves than I had before as I didn't really have enough I wanted to really cover the ground then all that was left to do was to paint the rim black just to help frame the diorama and with that the diorama was finished Now here's a close-up of all the props that I made for this project. And I also made two little dioramas as well. And what I like about this diorama is that I can use it with different figures. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got something from this, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to support the channel, all I'm asking for is to subscribe and like this video. You can find me over on Instagram at KG Customs and also on TikTok at KG Customs 91. There I'm posting a lot of my progress shots and a few different little videos here and there. I think you'll really like it. Uh, I did put up a poll on TikTok about what my next project is going to be. A lot of people have decided that they want to see a r2d pool so i'm going to be turning this little r2d2 into a dead pool uh, so that should be interesting again i'm kg no matter where you are in the world i hope you have an amazing day and always remember to stay nerdy i'll see you in the next one and this is why we can't have nice things